to all of you. We're so glad you came our way. We hope our time with you will be a blessing and increase your understanding of the Bible. If you would like to donate and help grow this ministry, please check the options below. And folks, we will send you a free copy of our booklet, Training Your Children in the Way They Should Go. Thank you so much. And now let's enjoy some questions and answers from the Bible. Hello folks, we're back with chapter 21. Are you ready? Did you read ahead just a little so that you knew what was coming? Chapter 21, from down on the farm, our country chapel. Number one question. What name was given to the son of Abraham here in the third verse of chapter 21 of Genesis? Isaac. Isaac. So we're moving into a new story, so to speak, here. Question number two, what was done to Isaac on the eighth day? That was the day they circumcised. Little that had babies. started back with Abraham. And now they were keeping it up. So, Isaac, how old was Abraham when Isaac was born? One hundred years. <laughs> now I know the age expectancy was different back then. And by the way, here in our country, in the last few years, they say our life expectancy has improved. How about that? I guess we can go for that. But anyway, he was a hundred years old. But this was all a part of God's plan. And I think anyone, as they walk with God, can feel, about, feel good about his plan for them. What did Abraham do when Isaac was weaned? They had a great feast. He had a feast. And you know that he wasn't exactly a young pup when he got weaned. But anyway, I had a feast. What did Sarah see Ishmael doing at this time? Well, he was over there mocking. Isaac. Mocking, yes. Kind of like uh, Ishmael's mother did with Sarah when she found out she was with child. Like mother, like son, having the same disposition. What was Sarah's desire concerning this matter? Well, she, they were pretty jealous and had some pretty bad thoughts about it. And uh, so she wanted them thrown out. Get rid of it. Now, you know, we realize that when Abraham went into Hagar, and they had this child because they couldn't wait long enough and believe enough. Uh, something different started happening. And believe me, whenever anyone begins to do those kind of things that do not fit in God's plan for their life, things don't turn out as well. And that's for sure here. Uh, what was Sarah's reason for casting them out? Well, she wanted Isaac to be the heir, not Ishmael. Right. Uh, Ishmael was a second thought here. Uh, they kind of lost faith and tried to push God's plan ahead of time. But do remember, from the time Abraham was promised this, he, he was 75, and now 25 years later, that's a, a big stretch of a person's faith. And if you feel like your faith has been stretched, uh, you can know God's there. Because he stretches us all. Was Abraham grieved over this situation? Yes, it bothered him. Yes, big time. In verse 12, what did God say to Abraham? Well, God said, don't be grieved. Listen to your wife. In Isaac, things will be accomplished. It's going to turn out. Yeah. 
just Ishmael got in the way here and started something that has never been a good thing. What did God promise concerning Ishmael? Well, God would make a great nation out of him also. Yes. What did God or what did Abraham do to Hagar and her son? He did send them away. Send them away. I don't know. I just kind of feel here uh, just to send them out with a jug of water and some bread uh, seemed to be beyond Abraham, but that's what happened. Next question. Yeah, well, what, what provisions did he give Hagar and Ishmael? Well, here's some bread and water. Bread Bye, and water. See ya. Probably their bread was a little more nutritious than ours. <laughs> and water is water. My goodness. Where did they go? They went into the wilderness of Beersheba. Beersheba. Beersheba is a place that's mentioned often in the scriptures. Down around the area of Hebron. What happened to the water? Well, it ran out. Ran out, naturally. Now, Abraham knew that was going to happen, so did God. Uh, I don't know how Abraham felt about this, but God, God knew what he was going to do, of course. What did Hagar do with Ishmael? Well, she couldn't stand to see him die, so she took him over and put him under a truck. So he wouldn't be in the sun. They called, they called it a broom bush, mm -hmm. so we'd have plenty of shade, which is characteristic of the land. How far away did Hagar go from the boy? Well, about as far as you can shoot a bow and arrow. Well, that would be different with different people. I couldn't shoot it very far, how about you? But it would be a distance, of course. What prayer did Hagar speak? Oh, she says... Please, I don't want to see the death of my son. No. And naturally that was on her mind. Uh, couldn't be anything else but. Their provisions were the same as gone. Did God hear her and act? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, you know, if God could hear her out here in a kind of a desert, why couldn't he hear us in our time? I do believe so. What did the angel tell Hagar? She said, don't fear. Now that'd don't, be hard. Don't you suppose that we are fearful people more than we need to be? When the Lord promised to never leave us or forsake us, we just need to rest in that and realize that no matter what happens to us, the Lord's not going to leave us. We, we're the only ones that can damage that relationship. And we need to be careful with that. What promise did God make to Hagar? That he would make a great nation out of Ish, Ishmael, her son. Now that's quite something to listen to here out in the desert. Your provision's gone. And God says, I'm going to make a nation of people out of you, and there's only two of you at this point. You know, what God wants to do with any of us is bigger than we ever realize. And if we just had enough faith to say, okay, Lord, I believe it can make a big change in a lot of people's lives. Yours too. That's why we have this verse-by-verse -verse study. So that you could pick up on the things of God, the attitude of your heavenly Father, because He's just as interested in you as He was in Hagar and her son, because He has a purpose for us too. When God opened her eyes, what did she see? She saw a well with water in it. Yeah. <clears throat> Where'd that come from? Well, God has his ways. And believe me, folks, if you can believe in God and obey the Lord and walk with him, there will be things open up to you that you had no idea. I'm not saying it's magical. 
I'm not even saying it's going to be a miracle. But God has ways of working things out for everyone who's willing to follow him. Does the Bible say God was with Ishmael? Yes. Even though Ishmael was, what should I say, an afterthought, uh, a step away from God's plan, uh, God was still there. And I believe you can count on God more than you think, more than you ever realize. So don't forget that. As Ishmael lived in the wilderness, what skill did he learn? He learned how to use the bow and arrow and became a great archer. Well, that means he grew up, developed, became skillful. Don't you think you can do the same thing in certain categories within your ability that God has given? Because you continue to walk with God and you're learning to appreciate your Lord. He lived in what wilderness? Paran. Paran. That's mentioned a few times in the scriptures. Uh, if you could go to the maps in the back of your Bible, you would be able to find Paran and uh, Beersheba and Hebron and some of these other places. And uh, you'd be interested as you read and see uh, from what country was his wife from? Well, Ishmael took a wife from Egypt. Egypt. And that's where his mother came from. As we move on through the chapter, Abimelech, at this point, uh, the king asked Abraham to promise to do what? Please, tell me the truth. Don't lie. You know, it only takes one falsehood, and it takes an awful long time for people to have faith again. So don't, don't start it. And here we can learn it. That's why I say this verse by verse study of the scriptures will make you free. It'll help you to do the right things and free up your life and give you some peace and satisfaction that you wouldn't have by just living a haphazard life. God's direction is the best. Uh, be truthful. Did, did Abraham see to this? Yes, he did. Yes. It should have been easy for him. But you see, when people get in a hard stretch of life, it can get easy to become dishonest. Just hold tight. See what the scriptures are teaching you? And in the way as you obey these scriptures and listen to God this way, you make your life so much freer from the hazards of life. For what reason did Abraham reprove Ab Abimelech? Well, his servants had taken over a well. Yeah. No. <clears throat> Water was important, and digging wells was important. And sometimes crazy people came along and did crazy things and even filled up those wells. Uh, so there was fussing and fighting over this. Uh, did Abimelech know the well had been taken? No. No. Yeah, things happen that we don't know about, but we need to be prepared for just about anything, I guess. Abraham took sheep and oxen for what purpose? To make a covenant with Abimelech. They so that there would be a right kind of a relationship that they could trust one another. Yeah, he didn't want any more fussing. For what reason did Abraham set seven hue lambs before the king? To prove that he had dug the well. Yes. So that's how they did it then. I don't know what we would do today. You know, in years gone by, a handshake in America was all that it took. You were a person of your word. 
Today, it's not that simple. But no matter what, we still need to be people of our word. What name was given to the place? It was called Beersheba. Beersheba. Here we have Beersheba again. We'll hear it other times. From what land was Abimelech? Uh, Philistines. The Philistines had moved down through the countryside from a distance and had taken over this area. And the Philistines will be a part of Israel's history. What should I say from here on out? Go on up into King David and Samson and so on. We're getting close to the end of this chapter too. So uh, what did Abraham do in Beersheba? He planted a grove and then he called on God. Abraham was always doing something like this. Of course, I would go for shade trees too. I've planted my share. They're always a comfort. How many days did Abraham sojourn in the land of the Philistines? Many days. It says many days. And uh, I'm going to read uh, uh, the next to the last verse in chapter 21. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Now, even though Abraham had done some of the things that he did, uh, he still had a heart for God. The same thing was said of King David. And I hope the same thing can be said of us, that we have a heart for God. And that's why off and on in these early chapters, we have Abraham and Jacob and others calling on the name of the Lord. It wasn't just prayer. It was a, it was a type of describing how they always kept their relationship with God properly. You know, there's something in all of us that wants to believe and lean on someone who is bigger than us, greater than us. And that's so good and right and comfortable. So join with us again, will you? The next time, it'll be chapter 22 on. So read ahead, please. This verse-by-verse -verse study of the Scriptures is going to help you know God so much better. And it will make you free in so many ways that we can't describe at this point. But just hang around, will you please? We'll be back with you next time.